this time we're going to do a sailor collar. And the biggest difference between a sailor collar and the two that we've done previously is that the original, the first two follow the same neck shape. But with the sailor collar, because we're changing the shape of the neckline, we also will have to change the shape of the neckline on the body. So we'll be trimming that out a little bit. And this is one of the ones in the book that they've used an illustration that doesn't quite match the picture. So, okay. So in this picture, you can see how far down the neckline is. It, the break point is about an inch and a half above the bust point level. And it, it comes together so that this side is overlapped by this side, which means that there will be buttons or something underneath there. They haven't drawn a button on it, but because it overlaps that way, it has to connect somehow. So in theory, it will have buttons. So with the illustration being like that, and this over one side overlapping the other, when you look at the instructions, it just came to the center front. So I changed the instructions in my book a little bit. And what I've done with them is extend this out an imaginary 5 eighths of an inch because the overlap from the center front so that you have a nice space for your buttons down the middle is to extend it over 5 eighths of an inch. Because this is half scale, I will go ahead and use 3 eighths of an inch instead of 5 eighths, but that's what it would be full scale. So there's nothing wrong with following these instructions, but if you were to do that, your color would come to a point and not overlap. And sometimes they fix misprints like that in later editions, so your edition may have been adjusted or not. But that's the way we're going to do that. We're, if we extend it out 5 eighths of an inch and just bring that edge over, then we will redraw that line so that it comes out further. The other thing that's different, the sailor collar in the instructions comes straight over, but the sailor collar in the picture is curved and you can do it either way. There are multiple choices for sailor collars, but I'm going to change mine to match the picture and I'll explain how to do that. And you're welcome to follow the instructions the way they are. Just know that your picture won't match if you do that. This one is raised in the center back neck an eighth of an inch like the others that we've done to nothing on the corner. And then it changes at the front. So I'm going to use a full sheet of paper because it will take more to do this one. And since I know in the book it says to measure down, oh, I'll zoom back out. Oh, you must get nauseous. If I were to measure down eight inches full scale, that means I would measure down four inches half scale. And that looks like kind of a lot. I'm going to go ahead and make it three and a half at the most. In fact, I want it to fit on the page, so I'm only going to come down three inches, and I think that looks fine. You can choose how far down your sailor back neck comes. And then in front, if this is the bust level, our break line is above that. So I'm going to choose this as where my neckline ends. I can make it go lower, but the other thing that's going to happen with it is that this is going to have an extension, which is automatically going to make it higher. 
So I'm going to start by tracing on my back and leave enough room there for seam allowance. And I'm going to mark a little further down on it because that will be helpful information. Then keeping in mind that this has to overlap the minimum amount, but since it lays flat, it is just going to be the minimum. So full scale you'd use a half, and I'm marking it at a fourth. So I'm putting this on here so it's lining up exactly at the point. And then I'll rotate that until it touches. And I'm going to trace my front on here. Just the way that it is, and I'll mark where the bust point is as a reference. Okay, so those are my two pieces that are basic that are going to be my sailor collar. And if this is my bust level right here, I want to decide how much cleavage I'm showing. That's You just measure down from the neck and decide where you want that to be. And that's usually something that's discussed as a, as a basic standard for each company or something that you can just decide individually if it's just one. But before I start this, if this is my center front and I know that I have to incorporate my collar into that extension, I'm going to measure out full scale I would measure 5 eighths, half scale I'm going to measure 3 eighths, and then in addition to that I'm going to put a reference line where the stitching, the seam allowance is going to go. So I've got three lines out there. I can ignore this one, but I want you to be aware of it. So if I mark where the bust level line is right here, then I can come back to this point, which is at the bust level, because I think it's going to end up a little higher. And I'm going to start here and line the ruler up right here and rotate the ruler around until it touches the neckline. And that actually ends up right about where I put that mark. So I'm happy with this. But when I did that, did you see how I touched here and I rotated into the neck? If I came up to here, I would actually be making the neck, the collar, go into that neck space and it would be uncomfortable. So you don't just draw a straight line from the shoulder corner to your break point. The break point is where it ends. You work backwards and you start from your break point and you taper the ruler until it touches the neckline as it's curving around. And then you draw that line. And that's going to be the edge of your collar. And I'm going to extend that out. And this is going to be where I cut this off on both pieces. So if I were making this to match my front, on my front I would need to I would need to cut this off exactly in the same place so that my neckline matched. So for my front, this is where I'm going to be cutting off my neckline, but I'm also going to be adding that overlap. So this is the common line, and on my front, I would need to extend that out to match this one so that they sew together properly. But this is the common line, so I've marked it on both pieces. So if I were working on another one, and I'll just do that. So this one is going to be my collar. And this is going to be my front. I always hate it when I make that sound.
So I'm going to come to here and my line's going to go, I'll put my line where those two are. And for my little blouse, I'm going to extend that out my 3 eighths of an inch and draw that line that they share. So that's the body of my the body, the bodice that my collar sews into. And this is the center front and this is the overlap extension and this will be my seam allowance line on my center front. But we're working on collars so I'm helping you see how it blends in but unless you decide to sew this together as a final project you won't actually have to finish this one, but you do need to understand how the two relate. So, this wouldn't be an issue anymore, and this part would be garbage. And this would just be where the buttons go. And in the picture, they've extended that down so it crosses over the waistline, and, and you would think all of that through and make those changes, but as it relates to the collar, this just gets cut off and that joins, so when we make the collar, it will sew into this. Alright, back to the collar. So, we're making the collar, we've chosen our break line, it's actually going to cross over right here because the other side is is going to blend across it. So it's actually going to come up here. So if you want it lower, you'll need to lower that mark about seven eighths of an inch so that it the break point is lower. Okay, so for our collar right here. We're also cutting it off. This is our fourth of an inch seam allowance. This is garbage. There's more seam allowance. This is our center back. It's going to be on the fold. And I needed to raise this a sixteenth of an inch to the knife. So I will just add that and blend it up. So when I add my seam allowance, it will join. And then I want the bottom of this to be level. And you could make one that wasn't level. It's, it's your sailor color. But I added my seam allowance first. And then this shape is your design edge. So I've got my seam allowance on here already. You can make this as long as you want to. And because you want to decide whether you want this to go over the edge, and if I'm making it like my picture, it does go over the edge of the sleeve. So I could bring my curve clear out here based on that picture. So I could have something that... There's a lot of different ways to end these. Sometimes they come out 
and they're a right angle down here and they will blend. So this is the way I'm thinking that the picture is more, but you don't have to do it like the picture. I will get out my curve and make it look something like that because I'm trying to make it look like the picture. But you can also make it so that it just comes to the edge and just have it be a straight line between the two. You can make this longer or shorter. You can even curve the back of this. Those are all design choices, but I'm making it like the picture, so... Now that is a design choice. All of this stuff that I did at the beginning was a fit ch choice and it was important to keep it that way. But everything that I'm doing now is just the shape that I'm choosing. And this was a optional line. And this is where my notch goes. So I'm going to measure out perpendicular to the seam where that goes and I'm going to add a fourth of an inch seam all the way around here for my top collar and my under collar and I'm not going to make an under collar for this. I don't expect you to. If you want to, you can. But the under collar for this would be the same. You'd blend from zero and take it so that it's just a little bit smaller. So that it rolls under and you can't see that stitching line. And, you know, maybe I've gone a little bit severe with that. I could come in this way, but that's not what it looks like in the picture. This is more of a right angle, so I'm just going to push it out a little bit more. And so I don't confuse you, yes, I ended up making the seam allowance first and coming in from it. But as long as you know you're doing that as you do it and you connect the right lines to each other, that's okay. It would be a problem, though, if I connected this line to that line and called it seam allowance. And I just brought that to your attention because it's something I still do occasionally. So just make sure that you're always bringing your stitching line, to your stitching line, and your fold line, I mean your seam allowance line, to your seam allowance line. The other thing that I also still occasionally do that kind of drives me crazy is that when I'm making my neck an armhole, I occasionally, instead of putting my neckline and my arm hold together, I will accidentally turn it over and try to combine my neckline with my arm hole and vice versa. And then I'll do it and at some point I'll look at it and start over. So make sure you're aligning the right um, seams together. Alright, so all of that's garbage. I'm going to cut that out now. And you can fast forward through this. Oh, I'll leave this part. Okay. 
So I'm just going to cut that off. There's my collar, and here is my front that it sews to, and this joins right here where the notch is, so if I were sewing these two together, the back isn't going to change much. Those two would be sewn together, and then I would sew this to them, and this is going to line up exactly on the stitching line there. And where this hangs over, you're not going to see it because this seam will be sewn first and that will be gone. So instead of making this the same shape as the front, I would probably make it a little smaller than that and I would use my seam allowance right here and cut, line up with the seam allowance and come to the end. Do the same thing on the other side and come to the end and draw a line across the two and trim all of this off because that would be unnecessary and when it's this is what you would get and you would end up sewing those two things together and there would be a facing on the inside that would turn the whole thing in but this is just collars today If you wanted to use this on your blouse pattern that we sew together, you could do that. You would just need to change the neckline on the body of the blouse. And I'm shaky tonight, so that was a little crooked. So you don't have to turn this part in, but you do need to understand it. There would be your finished one. And whatever you end up making the collar look like, you'll want to draw a picture of what yours is going to look like finished. <laughs>